everyone. Welcome. I'm James Milan, and this Talk of the Town episode is a, an update with one of our favorite local arts organizations, the Arlington Center for the Arts, uh, with its executive director, Tom Formicola. Tom, great to see you again. Happy New Year, James. And Happy New Year to you, too. We talked a little bit before we came on camera about the fact that we're both feeling a little bit hopeful, and uh, and that's a great way um, for us to be anticipating uh, coming months, which is what we're here to talk about. Um, I'm enjoying the fact that we are, have now started uh, a rhythm that we will hopefully stay in where we're checking in with you guys once, uh, once a season, once a quarter, however you want to look at it, but regularly throughout the year, just to make sure that, our, that we and our audience are kept apprised of all the things going on at the ACA. I will never send my regrets to your invitations. <laughs> yeah, that is just one more uh, bonus from having this relationship with you guys. Um, but really, we do are, are interested, of course, in, in knowing. Uh, so what what do we have to look forward to uh, with ACA activities, which I know cater to lots of different segments of the local yeah. population? Well, so in whatever order you'd like, just sure. let us know. Uh, you know, uh, we kicked off our winter term on January 11th, so we're already we're already rolling along, and it, and it feels great. Um, lots of great classes in our winter term. Um, uh, much of it is visual. Uh, I'm sorry, much of it is virtual. I meant to say, right. um, visual and virtual. there's a lot of visual too. <laughs> um, but much of many of the classes that we're offering are, are being offered virtually, but there are um, some in person classes that we're running as well. Our ceramic studio is open. Um, you know, we're running um, folks are, are working at a social distance. Everyone has their masks on, um, you know, all of the cleaning rules are in place. So we're being very mindful of, um, you know, all the regulations coming to us from the town and the state. Uh, and we're so pleased to be able to offer those classes. And they're, you know, wildly popular. Capacity is limited, but um, but but folks are super interested in, you know, sort of getting out and, and doing some things with their hands in a room with other people. And so we're being super responsible about that. And we're so happy to welcome some folks into our space. And that's some um, adults and kids as well. Um, yeah, if, I don't, if, I, if you don't mind my interjecting, I'll just have to say that uh, I was mentioning to you earlier that my own wife and daughter have taken advantage of that and have done so for the last couple of months and are really, really pleased uh, with the experience that they've had. And uh, as you say, just a handful of people, very, very few able to be in there in the space at one time. But they're having they're having a great old time, and we are all as with ceramics classes everywhere. We are all getting the benefits uh, in terms of some lovely, lovely additions to our our household goods. I, I'm so glad to hear it, and I can tell from all the smiles I see um, behind the mask. It's it's the <laughs> eyes now that indicate yeah, the smile, right. and you know what? You really can tell when somebody is smiling. That is true. That uh, you know, as we've all gotten used to just you know, the bottom of faces being obscured. I think we have learned to read uh, what's, a, what's above those um, yeah. in such a way. You can see it around here. You can see yeah. it sometimes, you know, in, in other places. But anyway. It's amazing. And I should also say, like, it's been really interesting to see, you know, when we first started offering virtual classes um, last spring, you know, not everybody was really all that jazzed about them. But what we have found is that as the, the year has gone on, I mean, I think what people realize is that, you know, this, this period that we're in isn't going to end quickly. And so people have really climbed on board more and more, uh, you know, with virtual classes. And our, our winter enrollments are robust. I mean, they're not what they were when we were in person, for sure, but, but they're healthy. Right. I mean, and you probably would have had a certain set of expectations that needed to be tempered in, in light of COVID. And yeah. sounds like those expectations have been met or exceeded in terms of your enrollment. We've, um, you know, we came to this with some teachers who were particularly savvy about like, you know, how to, you know, bridge the divide. And we learned a lot from them. And, um, you know, we've also taken opportunities uh, to, uh, to you know, train you know our instructors that that weren't so well versed in how to do that. Um, you know, I mean, there are some great things that have come out of you know this difficult period. 
we've all learned more. I mean, we're, you know, we will all return to the new world a, a little bit smarter, I think, a little savvier. Yeah, and with a little bit more, I would imagine for you, um, you know, especially being again, it, it, the, the nexus for a, re a really creative community, a little bit broader idea of what is possible and how you can present your classes and, uh, and your other activities in a way that enhance them even further using what you've learned through, yeah. through these constraints. Um, you know, I, I listen to NPR often and I, you know, they often do like kind of quirky little segments and I kept listening for them to talk about like the words of um, the buzzwords of 2020 and I never heard that, but I'm sure they did it. And I'm sure, I'm sure pivot and nimble were on that list. <laughs> Well, let us nimbly pivot right now to uh, to a, you know the next item on your agenda. To so you you mentioned the classes are underway and going well, uh, but I know that that there's other stuff too. Yeah. I'm super excited to um, say that we are um, really pleased to be offering vacation arts camps again this year, and our first one is going to be in February again. Capacity is more limited than it normally would be. Um, the classes will be smaller, which is, you know, great for the kids. Um, everyone's going to have their mask on. People will be working at a social distance. Um, and uh, and the, there's been a healthy enrollment for our February camp, I, an even healthier enrollment for our April camp. And boy, like people are really thinking ahead to summer when I think we all believe that we're going to be in a, a better place, if not a perfect place yet. And, um, and so... So those camps are selling well. I'm I, again. I'm so grateful for the support of the community, who really seems to keep watching what we're doing and um, you know supporting us by you know participating. Um, mm -hmm. So it's super exciting. So folks, if they go to our website uh, at www.acarts.org, um, you know they'll find information about the the camp programs and the classes that we're running. And and I'm encouraging everybody I remember, to sign up. I remember from our, our fall uh, update that you had, you know, kind of cast your eyes back on how things had been, had gone since the pandemic hit. And you were, you know, you were understandably pleased by how summer camps for the kids had gone. And so it's great. It's just great yeah. to know that uh, kids at least have the option of having a, an in-person ACA experience. Uh, then, the rest of us will have to wait a little while longer. Yeah. The nice thing is, is because we, you know, we were one of the first groups to sort of charge out of the gate when the, when the gate opened and, um, you know, to actually try to produce a summer camp. And what's nice about that is that uh, as we approached the February camp, we learned all sorts of things this summer. And so it's, it's nice to sort of return to, you know, that program with, you know, specific ideas about like what's going to work particularly well. Mm hmm. And how about, you know, do you have, you, I know that that ACA events of different sorts kind of are, are, are scheduled throughout the, the annual calendar. Uh, and, and I know that there are some probably coming up in the next couple of months. Uh, and I guess, like with everything, they will be adjusted to accommodate for the current yeah. circumstances. So I should mention that we announced at our annual meeting on December 10th that we would be presenting um, a, a concert by um, uh, Boston's Queen of the Blues, Tony Lynn Washington, on Valentine's Day as a gift to the community. We're totally committed um, to making that happen, but it's not going to happen on Valentine's Day. I'm super sorry to say. Uh, Tony Lynn Washington and her band were also really disappointed, but there are just... Um, uh, restrictions in place that make it super challenging to um, to present a live concert or even produce uh, a recorded concert. And there were some ways we might have done it, but the band was thinking they all wanted to be in a, a room together. I mean, you know, it, I mean, we did get to this point where we were talking about, well, there were two saxophonists and we thought we could put them in two different rooms and then we could put Tony Lynn Washington singing in another room and then we could have the rest of the band in another room. And the thing that I'm amazed about is, well, that's possible. But in talking to everybody, what we found out is that it wasn't ideal. And they wanted to deliver us a great product. And so we decided that we would wait until we could put at least more people in the same room yeah. together. Yeah. And obviously, 
uh, it's a great idea uh, to have it for Valentine's Day as a kind of, you know, Valentine Valentine to the community. That's lovely and hard to give up, I'm sure. However, you know, what a great idea to for a celebration as soon as it's possible yep. of the fact that it is possible. Exactly. Uh, you know, so if it's deferred a little bit, but we are going to get a great concert at some point in the future at a time again where we can all enjoy and celebrate the ability to take that in. I think um, modesty prevents you James from saying that ACMI has a big hand in helping us to produce uh, that concert with Tony Lynn Washington. And yeah I mean I gotta say on our own end you know I'm sure there's disappointment uh, throughout the rest of my our staff as well because we have been talking about this concert and looking forward to it uh, over the last little while. So anyway, understandable um, that it does need to be deferred, but that's a disappointment for sure. Um, I also wanted to mention that our uh, Created Equal exhibit just came down. It was a great big success. It was extended by popular demand, really. Um, and uh, a, a lot of folks did experience it in person by appointment. Um, and, uh, and a lot of folks experienced it virtually as well. So that came down actually just this week and we are prepping for a new exhibit. It's gonna be a members show um, that, will, um, that will go up uh, in March and the, the show will open, I think on March 11th and we'll do uh, at the end of the month on March 25th to be precise, uh, an opening celebration of it. And that will very, likely be a virtual celebration. But um, we've asked artists working in all medias to explore the, the ways we experience togetherness and to envision a world where we all stand united, which is also a, a nice theme to begin a, a new year on. Um, and so That's folks will talk about, yeah, yeah. So folks will talk no doubt about like triumphs and struggles around, you know, family and love and ecology and friendship. We expect a pretty broad range of, um, of, of themes. So. That's great. I did want to, I was intending to ask you about Created Equal because I, you know, that took up a, a good chunk of our conversation last time. And uh, I, it was great to hear, like you said, that it was legit uh, extended by popular demand. So good, good for you and good yeah. for all the folks who were, were able to take it in. Yeah. My own was virtual, but you know, it's nice to know that people were there in the gallery as well. Yeah, we saw, we saw folks every week. Which was, which was really nice. And again, these days people have to go out of their way to see an exhibit. And like, I'm just, you know, I'm so grateful for like folks, you know, going out of their way to make it happen. Yeah, it reinforces the kind of place that Arlington, you know, the, <clears throat> the Center for the Arts, excuse me, <clears throat> has in Arlington. And, yeah. you know, there's been plenty of evidence going back a number of years of that, how, how closely held uh, by the community the ACA is, but never, never, never get that message enough, I'm sure. It's true. Uh, we had a, you know, a fall fundraising campaign and uh, we set a goal to raise $60,000 by the end of December. And I'm really pleased to say it was an ambitious goal. Uh, and I'm really pleased to say that we met that goal. We exceeded it by a, a little bit. And, you know, that's completely a testament to like the, the great support that we enjoy from all the town folk. I mean, like people came out of the woodwork to make contributions. And um, there were a few large contributions in that mix, but there were many, many small contributions. And I have to say like, there's something really touching about getting a small contribution because you know, people are giving what they can afford. And that's that's so meaningful. Like it's, it's just so meaningful to know that you have like the support of folks that they wanna see you be successful. Absolutely. And it does remind me that, um, you know, talking to your predecessor, Linda Shoemaker, a couple a few years ago now about the makeup of the donations that came in um, in the wake of the ACA needing to move from its longtime uh, headquarters in what is now the, Bibs, uh, the Gibbs School, you know, over to where you are now. That was just such a huge thing. It was it, it was. Uh, cause of much trepidation, I'm sure, within the ACA, and yet the public response was, again, incredibly gratifying, yeah. I would imagine. Um, and she, I remember talking to her about the number of small contributions or the proportion 
of the money that came in through small contributions. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. They're so meaningful. Not meaning to discount those major donors. Of no, course. no, no. I'm, I mean, I'm super grateful to the big donors too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful to everybody on the spectrum of, of, of giving. Um, and, you know, it's fueling our journey into 2021. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm talking really positively about all of those classes because I'm thrilled about the way that they're running. But the context for it is they're still running, like, you know, under unusual circumstances and capacity is limited. And we're not, we're not able to generate the same kind of earned income during COVID that we would be able to otherwise. And so we are really depending on income from fundraising in a way that that we haven't before. Traditionally, like 90% of our income has been earned, um, but that's that's not gonna be the case. It wasn't the case last year and it won't be the case this year either, um, you know, because, because our capacity is limited. Right, and yeah, one more word about that because it, it, it also kind of um, invokes something that you said earlier about the fact that there are bright spots and opportunities in throughout this whole kind of dark period we've been living through. One of those that I've noticed, and it applies to the ACA, but also to kind of food insecurity um, uh, organizations and uh, kind of across the spectrum that have, whose, whose fundraising goals or expectations have been exceeded because people are reaching deep into their pockets uh, now, understanding that, you know, this is a crisis that we're all feeling, that, we're, that affects all of us, but that some are so much more vulnerable to. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm sure that more money is needed for all of the social service organizations and arts organizations out there, et cetera. But it's been notable um, yeah. just how many stories like your own of a goal set and then exceeded um, there are. You know, and I also think it's notable that like, you know, people have tough choices right now about like, how to spend their money and who to give their money to because everybody is needy and everybody's asking right now. And, you know, I'm amazed at like sort of the grace with which people have been sort of navigating that field. And I think being really thoughtful about like, you know, not what organization am I going to give my money to, but what organizations am I going to give my money to and what are my priorities and, you know, what are the, what's out there that I really count on and that I really enjoy and that I, I really want to see on the other side of the, river when, when we get there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that even extends beyond the, you know, not-for-profit organizations. Like, you know, we're all making sure that we're ordering our pizzas and our Chinese food and even like really nice dinners that we would never have ordered as takeout dinners before. But we want those restaurants to like survive and right. be there for us. Yeah. And we want and to be there, which means itself. we have to be there for them. Right. And that's happening everywhere, obviously, but we also know, you know, at ACMI and, and, and in our news programs, just profiling the kind of number of local organizations from nonprofits to, you know, small shops and businesses uh, and restaurants, you know, just the extent to which people are trying to support those, those entities. Yeah. In this, this is a great town. Yeah. Pe the people in this town are terrific. <laughs> um, let me ask you about one other thing that uh, I'm just wondering about because I have been attending it each year for the last number of years, and that's the Blue Jean Ball that you have, that you guys sponsor, is usually coming around this time of year, if I re remember. So are you going to be able to do that? How's that going to so, work? So we are going to do it. We've delayed it a little bit this year. We're doing it on April, Saturday, April 10th. Mark your calendar. Okay. Um, and um, we are we we had a lot of discussion about what to do, and we decided that we were going to recreate our uh, blue jean ball as a virtual experience. And we are still very much in the process of creating something, but I can tell you that it will surely include some musical performances, and it will uh, again include an auction component, and it will probably include some like fun and um, interesting remarks from, um, you know, folks around town that um, love and support us. Sounds good. Sounds good. I mean, obviously it is, it is a super fun event uh, and always yeah. packed um, in, in my own experience. So I imagine the 2022 event, uh, we'll get back to that. Let us all hope. 
Um, but you know, I'm, I'm sure like so many other things, you are going to make it as, as we want it to be fun and lively fun in the virtual world as you can. Yes. So that sounds good. Anything that we have missed Tom, that we should let the audience know. You're good, James. I think you, I think you hit everything that's on my list. <laughs> um, so that sounds, it sounds great. And yeah, I, I really, I, I genuinely enjoy, uh, well, I enjoy all the work that I do of this sort, but I love talking to you because um, you have come to understand this community quite quickly. Um, you clearly appreciate it. You have great energy. That energy gets transferred in, in turn to the organization itself. Um, and it just seems like you guys are faring as well uh, as you could be, um, you know, over the course of this last almost year now. So well done. It's a pleasure talking to you, James. <laughs> well, you. we look forward to, um, you know, we'll probably be on the other side of some of the events that we have mentioned today. Um, but uh, we will be talking to you sometime in the spring for yeah. sure. We'll yeah. be looking forward to new ones. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. And so best of luck with what's, with what's coming up. And uh, we'll look forward to the next time we get to chat. Sounds great. All right, I have been speaking to Tom Formicola, who is the executive director of the Arlington Center for the Arts, beloved by you and me, all of us. And um, thanks again, Tom, for your time. And thank you out there for joining us. We'll see you next time.